All right, everyone, we're here at Revolting Performance with the SCR1 on their dyno. This is the first EV that they've ever had on their dyno. We have it here for testing our motor cooling, a bunch of other cooling strategies we have in the battery. We're just gonna take it and basically run an entire lap over and over and over again of what the car will be doing on track. So we can sit there beside the car with thermal guns. We've loaded up the car with more sensors than we've ever had before. We're just gonna capture as much data as we can and if we need to stop midway, we can. We're not in a racetrack environment. So it's just a very controlled testing environment that we're trying to achieve here with the car. So we're gonna put this thing on the dyno. It's already strapped down. We're just getting ready to start doing the pull. So stay tuned and watch us dyno test this EV race car. My name is Jordan Priestley with Revolting Performance. We're out here at Utah Motorsports Campus at our shop. Um, we're running the SCR1 um, on our DynoJet 224 XLC chassis dyno. Uh, we're gonna do some thermal testing, just see what the maximum power output is of the vehicle and just kind of all around learning new EV stuff, which is really cool. So this is actually our first time, you know, strapping an EV down to our chassis dyno. Uh, we've been in business for 15 years doing gasoline combustion stuff. The last three years we've been doing uh, EV stuff in the form of Tesla modifications. We have yet to put one of them on the dyno, however, uh, so this would be kind of a learning experience for us. But what we've done is we've strapped the car down on the dyno, we made sure everything's safe and it's ready to go. And now they're just updating firmware, loading it, getting into like a chassis dyno mode so we can start playing on the dyno. Okay, so we're about halfway through doing our load testing of the battery uh, and all our thermals in this car. We actually have to stop and take a break because the, this is an eddy current brake dyno, which means it uses an eddy current against two big steel plates to stop the width, to put a load on the car. So when we looked in the, the little peephole for the motor, the discs were actually glowing red. So we were talking to the, the tuner here and he said on a gas car, normally that would just, you turn the brakes on full blast and the gas car would just bog out, you just can't do it. Because the motor has so much torque, it's actually overpowering the eddy currents and it's heating them up. The discs were glowing red. We're just taking a bit of a break, let the dyno cool off. Uh, our temperatures stayed great. Uh, all of our motor temperatures, I think we've kind of fixed that from when we overheated a lot last time. We're just watching our, uh, our battery pack sell min max values for the voltage. They're staying pretty good. We've only gone through about 25% capacity and we were pretty much wide open throttle the entire time for probably only about 10 minutes, maybe maybe 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, pretty much just buried into the throttle the whole time. Um, we're really happy with how it's turning out. We're just trying some to fool around with some torque numbers, see if we can get better torque and power out of it. What those numbers do now that we've actually seen what an electric car does on the dyno, it's really nice to see it on a graph and, and how it correlates against a gas car. When you look at the torque line and the horsepower line, it's very linear, it's just a straight limit, a uh, straight linear line. When you see the numbers start to fall, that's actually because we're hitting limits in the VCU. The only reason the line stopped going up or changed direction is because we hit a limit. So it's really nice to fool around with those limits and see what it's actually doing in the car. So I think we're pretty much cooled off now. We're gonna go back to doing some more load testing. Another fun fact, it is so loud in here that I have to wear these. It's actually ear piercing. Once the motor loads up, the sound that that motor makes is just, it's deafening.
So we're just letting the dyno cool off. Fun fact about EVs and running this on, an, on a dyno, this hasn't really ever been done, that at least we could find. And when we talk to all the dyno tuners, they haven't seen it either. Now that we're trying to load test the dyno, he said he'd have a thousand horsepower car on here and the eddy current dyno would be able to load that car up. And basically the car would overheat before the dyno overheated. With an EV, because it's so efficient, you're looking at like a 90% efficiency, 95% efficiency. The car is not even really getting too hot. We saw uh, an internal motor core temperature of 170, which at 180, we start to see a D-rate. Our oil temperature going in and out of the motor was 65, 70 degrees Celsius. So really, we were not even close to being to a point of let's start to shut it down. The dyno, however, the plates were glowing red. Uh, the car was still pulling through the load and it was actually kind of neat to see that it was putting that much load on the dyno and, and was basically just okay with it. The dyno was not okay with it, so we, are, we have been shutting it down before we get into the dyno saying that it needs to stop. But we're just letting the dyno kind of really cool off now. We got a little bit of a Dexron 6 coming out of the vent for the sump, the dry sump tank. So we might have had just a little bit too much in it there. But other than that, the car is performing great. Um, we're just being sensitive to the equipment. We don't want to damage anything. But this is really neat. Even the, the guy who owns the dyno, he's like, this is really cool. I've never seen anything like this uh, and never experienced it. And he says some pretty powerful cars on here. So we're just letting things cool off. I think we've gathered all the data that we need to gather. But now that all the temperatures are up, as far as the battery's now up to around 50 degrees Celsius, the motor's at a nice operating range, I think we're going to try and do a hero pull just to see what the power levels are now that things are all at the temp. Because before we saw 25 degrees Celsius on our pack temp when we started and this particular cell likes to see it, uh, its maximum discharge rate at around 60 to 50 degrees Celsius. So now that we're at that, the temperatures are all up, we're going to start to probably do one more hero pull and then probably pack it up. You good? We just finished uh, doing some dyno work with the uh, first EV that we've had on our dyno. Pretty incredible to see the, the way that the torque is produced instantaneously and how the power curve is, is completely flat, you know, versus like a combustion engine that builds power with RPM. Um, it was just pretty incredible to see that difference. We also ran some load testing with our eddy current. And uh, for the first time, I saw my eddy current motor glowing orange, <laughs> which was pretty interesting. Uh, the, the electric motor, the power that it produces, um, was actually able to really basically overpower the eddy current, um, creating a tremendous amount of thermal temperature in that device. Uh, it was pretty cool to see that. Just see how the electric motor kind of behaved and, and interacted with the dyno. Definitely looking forward to doing more testing and seeing uh, you know, what you guys figure out. All right, so we're all wrapped up here. Um, we got the car back in the trailer, we're done with the dyno. Today was a great learning experience. We picked up a lot of data points that we can't really capture on the track because it's all based on feel of the driver. Like when the driver's out there just trying not to die, uh, even on a testing day, you're trying to get the maximum performance out of the car to get it go the fastest, but you're also, even by yourself, still trying to keep the car between the lines on the apex, still drive good. This just gave us a whole bunch of data that you just can't capture when you're on the track. So this is very educational. We could see where our limits were coming in, where they were going out. Uh, we have some editing that we need to do to all the tables. We're gonna go try and uh, tack those tables, learn ourselves just in the different ways that we can power deliver at the beginning versus the end of the run and comb through all this data to get the best performing car that we possibly can. So it's really exciting because this is a very, very educational uh, piece to our learning as we build this prototype car. So we're gonna share everything that we find with you. If you guys have any questions, please send us a message. Uh, let us know what you would like to see out of all this because this is new for everybody. So please comment, like, subscribe. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.